Most people think wastewater just flows downhill. And yeah, in a perfect world, that's true. But in land development, we don't always have that luxury. Sometimes the site's flat, the groundwater's high, or there's nowhere for gravity to take it. So what do we do when gravity doesn't work? We pump it. Gravity sewer systems are simple and low maintenance, but they rely on having enough slope and that's not always possible. In flat regions like Florida, the elevation difference might just be a few inches over 100 feet. To get the right slope, you'd have to trench down to over 20 to 25 feet deep, and that starts getting expensive and risky, especially for long-term maintenance. At a certain point, gravity just doesn't make sense. So what do we do when gravity doesn't make sense? Time to introduce a pump station. A pump station, also called a lift station, is basically a pit where wastewater collects. Once it hits a certain level, pumps turn on and push it through a pressurized pipe called a force main. That force main moves through the flow, uphill or across flat terrain, until it can rejoin a gravity system. Here's a real layout from a past project. Sewage collects within the manholes, flows through the station, and gets pumped out to the nearest existing gravity main or an existing force main depending on how the system is set up in the community. All of this wastewater then goes to a wastewater treatment plant where all the sewage gets treated and then gets put back into the environment. So how do engineers actually design a pump station? We first start with the area of influence, the area where flow is going to collect in the gravity system. Then we pick a relative low point within the area of influence. That way we can get as much gravity as possible. Once we have a proper location, we then start understanding the demand. The demand is based off how many gallons per day we think each residential lot will make, commercial building, and any sort of service that will be provided through this gravity main. Once we understand the total demand into this wet well, from there we can then size the pumps. The pumps are dependent on a flow rate, friction losses, and a vertical lift that we call TDH, also known as total dynamic head and you really don't wanna oversize it and you can't undersize it. You need the right balance so the system runs efficiently and safely. It's more than just connecting pipes. You're managing pressure, surge, air release, and real world maintenance. A few things that people don't think about is backup power or storage. It's a must and these can't fail. It doesn't just take civil engineers. We need our mechanical and electrical engineers to ensure that this station remains running. Look at this. You ever seen one of these before? That's an electrical transformer. This supplies power to the lift station and keeps it running. More and more municipalities are actually requiring backup generators now. That way we can keep the station working 24 seven. Imagine not being able to get to the bathroom. Another thing people don't think about is force mains need a minimum cleansing velocity. Designers need to design the force mains to achieve a minimum of two to two and a half feet per second in the force main. This ensures that all solids and sewage remain moving through the pipe. We're not just routing flow, we're building systems that have to work 24 seven. Gravity is simple, but civil engineering isn't always that convenient. Pump stations and force mains exist because we have to build systems where nature doesn't cooperate. They're a critical part in how we move wastewater each and every day. And most people never even realize they're there. So let's give a shout out to the unsung heroes of civil engineers because pump stations are part of how we keep civilization running. Here, play this. I've been waiting way too long to ever say this. Had to have some patience.